Addiction, a neuropsychological disorder, the constant and intense urge to partake in certain actions. Behavioral addiction, a subcategory of addiction where your compulsions, well, they go towards your actions instead of the substances one consumes. This is known as a natural reward because in essence, it's a natural process, just an overdrive. These reward pathways, they're intrinsic to our animalistic brains. We use them to learn our environment. We use them to learn that something is good for us, so we must approach it. We use them to learn that something is bad for us, so we must avoid it. Animals who've had these pathways silence it. They only know what they are born with, their reflexes. But too much of a good thing is a bad thing. These behaviors are our best friends and our worst enemies. Doing activities that bring you rewards and bring you pleasure releases dopamine in your brain. It makes you happy. Even before we've been rewarded, we expect the happiness. So we, us animals, we seek these dopamine hits through what we do constantly. Some of us have some self-control and some spiral out of control. Most people get addicted to the usual, you know, gambling, gaming, the internet. But not for one boy, David Hahn. See, this happy Moorish kid, he didn't crave these modern addictions. He craved something more nerdy. He itched for, literally in the end, science. Born in 1976 in Royal Oak, Michigan, he was always interested in science. At six years old, most kids would be out playing sports, but he, he was indoors doing chemistry experiments. At this time of his life, his parents divorced. Not having a house he could really call a home, his science experiments were his comfort. His addiction started. Moving between places to be with his parents, he never really had any friends. But at 10 years old, his grandfather gave him what became his greatest love, the Golden Book of Chemistry Experiments. Joining the Boy Scouts of America, he always dreamed of and paved a path for the science medals. So what did he do to achieve this? He did what every kid in America did in the 80s and turned his mom's basement into a lab. Sarcasm intended. Who needs a gaming man cave anyways? He worked lots of little jobs to get money but none of them mattered to him. His jobs were just a means to gain chemicals and supplies. But remember when I told you an addiction comes to the point to where you do it at the expense of your own well-being? Or for David, yeah, that was still the case with this guy. He really just didn't care for his own safety. He literally experimented on himself. One time he turned up to a scout's meeting looking orange. He took an overdose of canthacanthin. He was testing ways of artificial sun tanning. And one of the chemicals he took was canthacanthin, which, although it's approved in Canada, its health and safety is still questioned till this day. The scary part was a transition of carelessness for himself to the carelessness to the well being of those around him. This behavioral addiction started to worry, started to impact and hurt those around him. Bringing dangerous magnesium to the camp that his friends ignited because they did not know what it was. He just wanted to build fireworks. Constant little explosions in his bedroom in the basement from his little experiments. The worst of which, to put it lightly, a biggie that proceeded to damage his hands get glass in his eyes because you know who needs goggles anyway he didn't wear any and 
casually set the whole house on fire. At this point, I would say most parents would go ape and flip, and at the very least ban their kids from this craziness. But not for David. The lucky youth was deported to the backyard shed, because at least now the house won't explode again. After getting his scout's atomic energy merit at 14 years old, David, he had a brainwave. He decided to turn the shed into a fully functioning nuclear reactor. The key ingredients were simple. American from 200 smoke detectors, thorium from lanterns, radium from really old glow-in-the-dark clocks, tritium from gun sites, this is America after all, so there are guns, blocks of highly toxic lead that he bored out with his bare hands, thousand dollars worth of batteries for the lithium, a lack of parental supervision, and a very good ability to lie. He pretended to be a physics teacher and he succeeded. Government bodies believed him and taught him how to build the reactor and isolate radioactive material. Then they even supplied him with it. This guy was so dedicated to the cause, he ordered uranium from the freaking Czechoslovakia because the Soviet Union just recently fell. He eventually succeeded and built himself a breeder nuclear reactor. But his lack of safety protocol has gone too far now, so much so that he himself has realized it. And for the first time in his life, his addiction cracked. The radiation levels in his neighborhood grew more and more as the weeks went by, and by a month, his Geiger counter could pick up the radiation five houses down the street. 31st of August, 1994, 2.40 a.m. In the dark cover of the early morning, David dismantled his reactor, putting its pieces into his car, bit by bit. The police were called because the neighbor thought he was stealing tires. They came and David instantly, worried more than ever for the safety of others, jumped and told them not to search the car. In his words, it was radioactive. His little science project just became an atomic bomb threat. With David arrested, the bomb squad was called in. But now with radiation levels at a thousand times out of normal, someone, uh, they had to clean it up, right? Well, that cleanup took 10 months to actually happen. After the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the police decided that they had no jurisdiction to clean up the mess, it was the Environmental Protection Agency in the end. They dismantled the shed, buried it in Utah. There was only one tiny caveat though. See, David's mother, she was afraid she was going to lose her house if officials knew how irradiated her house was. And she personally threw away a lot of the radioactive waste in conventional waste. Literally affecting God knows who. Nonetheless, the people who dismantled David's shed told him his life could have been shortened by these escapades. But he was too afraid to find out what he has done to himself. He refused the offers to test him. In the aftermath of the scandal, his girlfriend's departure, his mother's death, David, he became depressed. He joined the Navy and had a successful career, but even that, that couldn't stop his addiction. In 2007, his love for nuclear science caught up to him again. And again, he was removing radioactive material from smoke detectors. But unlike the past where he bought them, this time he was arrested because he was taking them from within his apartment building. But in the end, Though this tale closes with tragedy and sorrow, David's legacy is legendary. He really showed that there are no limits to what one person can achieve. You just have to be one addicted mad lad. <laughs>